Hello there, I'm Black Pride, broadcasting out of the UK into your homes. Welcome to my channel, first time you're passing by. Thumbs up, thumbs down, subscribe, share, interact with my subscribers, returning subscribers. Welcome again and thank you for sticking with me. And new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. I wanted to talk today about Italy um, in holding hands with China. Now, we all know that China was the epicenter for the virus, Wuhan. And now they've managed to keep under control. There's no more new cases. They've still got a few, I think about 13,000 that they're still working on. But at least there's no more new cases for the last 12 days. So they seem to have it under control. And what's happening now is that they are ex transferring their learning and what they found out with other countries, in particular Italy. So a troop of Chinese medicals, um, doctors, and, and you know, with all their medical equipment, have gone to Italy, and they are working with them. I don't know if they've left already, but they plan to work with them to suppress the virus. Apparently, they know what's causing it, they know what to do, and they know how to assist. Um, so let me just read some notes, and I'll add lib as I go along. So, after being the place to dread, China reigns victorious over the virus and is donating coronavirus testing kits to Cambodia, sent plain loads of ventilators, masks and medics to Italy and France, and pledged to help the Philippines, Spain and other countries, and deployed medics to Iran and Iraq. After And we all know that the stocks of China were dipping. Well, they are the ones that have least they dipped. I think where some of them have dipped for between 5 and 10%, China has only dipped 1%. I tell you, China is on the rise. You can't mess with them. They're not easy enough. Anyway, the Chinese president, Xi Jinping, told the Spanish Prime Minister, Pedro Sanchez, that the two countries should step up cooperation and exchanges after the outbreak. So from that, you kind of feel as though it's not going to last too long. It's just that some different countries have different agendas and some may hang, you know, make it last longer than is necessary while some have a genuine um, genuine attempt to curtail it. Um, we will not know what, who's got what agenda until the time passes. Hopefully, they'll get it under wraps. I mean, if we are following China and we are following Italy with the, uh, with the um, lockdown and isolation, we should be able to contain it. I just don't like the idea that they are really, I don't like the idea that they're separating the elderly because, you know, we keep hearing rumours about how the elderly is the most expensive and they drain resources. And I just don't like the idea that it's the elderly who are being targeted and isolated and separated for 14 weeks without, you know, without being able to talk, to, well, not, not necessarily being able to talk to anybody. In some cases, some of them won't be able to. And I just think, to me, that just rings alarm bells. Why would you do that? Anyway, um, as the coronavirus outbreak, outbreak spreads and countries struggle to respond, China has positioned herself as a leader and benefactor in public health, building the kind of soft power Beijing needs at a time of intensifying US-China rivalry and scrutiny of Chinese influence around the world. And that's according to The Guardian. The coronavirus first emerged in the, cent in the central Chinese city of Wuhan in December and threw the country into a state of emergency as more than 80,000 people were infected and more than 3,000 died public anger and criticism over the government's initial suppression of information and slow response enabling the virus to spread posed one of the most serious threats to the Chinese leadership in decades. But 
China are so formidable, you know, and forward thinking. So we all thought they were behaving harshly when we saw how they were treating people and, you know, temperature at the car and whizzing them off. But they've managed to contain it because they've been so vigilant. So how did China get to grips with its coronavirus outbreak? They're not really telling us, but um, the number of new infections has dropped dramatically after stringent quarantine measures and social distancing by the public, and China's messaging has shifted. In recent weeks, Beijing has claimed almost victory over the virus, and state media have hailed China's support for other countries facing the outbreaks. And now, because of the lessons that China has learned, they're now transferring that learning to other countries who've got it. Um, China's victory over COVID-19 has already been written and authorities are trying very hard for that message to be received overseas. Experts say that while these humanitarian efforts are real, they have political ends that deserve attention. Well, we don't really care about the political ends. We care about the virus being suppressed. You know, because what the um, governments of other countries are worried about is that China is going to gain back control, which is what they do not want. In a phone call with the Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte, this week Xi said, he hoped to establish a health silk road as part of China's global One Belt, One Road initiative, which has come under criticism from countries wary of expanding Chinese leverage and influence. For those of you who do not know what the um, One Belt Road initiative is, is that um, China has built roads to link all the ports they have access to all the ports around the globe. And that is heavy. Um, what's that word I'm looking for? Anyway, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. Um, collateral, that's what I was thinking. China is sending medical experts to Italy in its Health Silk Road Initiative a medical-centred vision of the Belt and Road Initiative. Can you imagine? That's why I said China not easy enough. So, let me just read this. That China has been trying to bring to every developing country in the world. The Belt and Road Initiative allows China full control of every major port, road and railway in the world facilitated through China offering developing country loans that the countries would then use to pay China to build infrastructure. This global power is what America has been concerned about. But if they are trying to do the same with the Health Silk Road Initiative, that means that they will have some kind of way of sharing um, their lessons learned with every country in the world. So they're starting off with Italy. It took 3,675 medical staffers belonging to 41 medical teams across China, assisting 14 temporary hospitals and seven designated hospitals in Wuhan to bring down the rate of the cases. And like I said before, no new cases have been reported for the last 12 days, but look how many doctors they needed, medical staff. 3,675. I mean, if we had something like that in the UK, we wouldn't have that staff to cope. We haven't got that kind of um, availability. I mean, we haven't even been have we haven't had enough staff to cope with regular stuff, let alone something like this. Considering that's how much they needed in order to keep it under wraps, there are still around thirteen thousand being treated in China, 
so they're not free and clear yet. Italy signed onto the Belt Road Initiative in March last year. Wow. You, I, you know, I know Jamaica signed up, Ghana signed up, um, I know Nigeria signed up, a number of countries, I think places in Asia have signed up with this Belt Road Initiative. So according to Noah Birkin, senior visiting fellow at the German Marshall Fund, by offering support to countries like Italy, Beijing highlights the struggles European countries have had in helping each other and draws a favourable contrast between itself and the US. While Trump is hitting Europe with a travel ban, China is the generous, selfish friend, Barkin said. Ooh. Trump ain't gonna like that. The effort appears to be working. Last week, Italy's foreign minister, Luigi Di Maio, posted a video of himself on Facebook, Facebook watching live footage of a plane of supplies and medics from China, noting that China was the first to send aid. Serbian President Alexander Vukic don't know how to pronounce that, said in a press conference this week that he believes in his brother and friend, Xi Jinping. He said, the only country that can help us is China. What is interesting, though, I, I heard somewhere where they said that 60 gigahertz millimeter radiation waves are, absorb are absorbable by oxygen from 5G towers and can create the same respiratory symptoms as the coronavirus. So at the moment we're isolating ourselves from each other when 5G towers could be the cause. In April 2018, Interestingly enough, Wuhan was the city announced to pilot the 5G engineering program. So it's ironic that it was Wuhan, that Wuhan was a city that was also hit by the coronavirus. So did Chinese government just close down the 5G networks to curb the virus symptoms, if what they're saying is true? Apparently, um, Henry Kissinger, in his paper called Depopulation, he was saying that it's an infected virus that will um, that would um, cause. Um, where did I write that? Oh, the greatest way to get rid of overpopulation is to inject people with contaminated medication. That was Henry Kissinger's 260K paper. You can actually look it up. So if, if you know, we have all these conspiracy theories that saying, oh, you know, it's a, a way to, depop to um, depopulate, de depopulate the, the globe and, um, and it's not the virus, but it's the 5G towers. But that still wouldn't make sense because they say... No, it, it doesn't make sense. It's not congruent. It's not consistent. Because, yeah, you do hear all these theories and all these conspiracy theories, but you'd have to kind of say to yourself, if that's the case, it wouldn't be, you know, you wouldn't be able to contaminate other people with it. It would also mean that you would need to be um, in a 5G area and... As far as I know, the UK haven't got that far yet. Jamaica definitely haven't got enough towers to do that yet. And I'm sure a lot of countries that have the virus haven't got 5G towers set up yet. I know they probably have in America because that's quite advanced. And I know Wuhan, they set some towers up there. But then that wouldn't be... Um, I don't know if they'd be able to transfer that human to human if if they say you can catch those symptoms from five from five G. So it's just it's just food for thought. 
Um, Switzerland was the first country in Europe with 5G. So, you know, I did write down these notes, but I just don't think it was Josh Gregoire Jones that said that. You can actually look that up. And he, you know, and it, check out the Two Edge Sword on YouTube. That's that's where I got the information from. Two Edge Sword on YouTube. That was just about the link between the 5G and its similarity. The, the symptoms are similar to the coronavirus. But like I said, you know, the countries it's happening in, they, they, as far as I know, they don't have 5G installed, so it doesn't make sense, you know, and people can come up with all this stuff, so we have to be careful not to latch on to everything that's going on, everything that's being said and making us feel as though it's, um, just because it sounds as though it's coming from an author authority, it's true, it's not necessarily true. We have to use our common sense. I think we do not know the makeup of the virus. We do know that vaccines are not good and we do know that vaccines are supposed to be the answer to curbing the virus. So that's the only thing but we do not know how that virus has come about. You know they are talking about bio warfare and stuff like that but we just do not know. All we need to focus on really is looking after ourselves and building up our immune system, drinking plenty of hot drinks, you know, gargling with salt and vinegar and lemon, all those kind of things. You know, I understand that if you drink plenty of warm, apparently um, if you catch the coronavirus, it, it causes a mucus on the lung and, um, it's best to catch it quick by just having hot fluids and it would flush it and it would it would kind of help you to um the body will take care of itself if you catch it quick enough so yeah it's very hard um to know what exactly is going on you know i just pick up bits and pieces i share bits and pieces sometimes i don't even know what's true and what's not true and you know when i read out those little bits from the newspaper i'm like or from whatever source I get it from, you know, sometimes I wonder, you know, is it something that should be shared or is it something that should be contained? Because you just don't know what's true from what's not true these days. All we know is that, I, you know, um, I heard that, well, we know from that family in China, well, they don't have it, but we, that voice that was on that, audio they have it but nobody knows her personally um if you know somebody personally then you can kind of say yeah it's really happening but then you've got people who say they've got it but have they just got the cold have they just got a flu you know you just don't know do you you just don't know but like i said the best thing i mean is to adopt what we should be adopting really hygiene good hygiene because if it is if it is spreading the way they say it's spreading, that's all we can do. And like I said, build up our immune system with zinc, vitamin C, just stuff like that, just commonsensical stuff. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.